Caleb's Story, Chapter 11 Another storm came. I retied the rope to the barn. The horses had been restless, a sign there would be bad weather, and the dogs paced. Don't fret, Lottie, said Grandfather. We'll keep the fire going and feed you well. Your life is good. Their lives are good, aren't they, I said. They have no worries. Grandfather smiled. What worries do you have, Caleb? I shook my head, not wanting to talk about it. I had seen Grandfather's bag packed. I had seen Papa pass Grandfather in the hallway, neither of them speaking. I had heard Sarah's words to Papa, the words telling him what she did not love about him. Are you worried about your Papa? Grandfather asked. I felt tears in my eyes. Grandfather put his arms around me. I looked over to the house, and I could see Papa watching us through the window. Your Papa will be fine soon, Caleb. He gets stronger every day. Pretty soon he'll only use a cane. He'll be happy when he's working again. I'm not worried about his leg, Grandfather. My throat felt tight. Ah, said Grandfather. Look, Caleb, your Papa has reason to be angry with me. I did a very bad thing years ago. I did something that affected his life every single day of it. But you can write him a letter now, I said. Grandfather sighed. I can, Caleb, but don't go thinking it will make everything better with your papa. Grandfather went to feed the horses. I looked to the house, and papa was still there, his face in the window, watching grandfather and me. Above us, the sky darkened. A noise woke me in the middle of the night. Was it the wind, or was it the kitchen door closing? Snow blew against my windows, and I went down the stairs and into the kitchen. An oil lamp burned on the table. Lottie stood by the door, wagging her tail. Lottie, what's the matter? Where's Nick? Lottie whined and jumped up on the door. I looked out the window, but I couldn't see anything in the storm. Sarah? Papa called softly from the bedroom. No, Papa, it's me, Caleb. I heard Papa get out of bed. He came into the kitchen slowly. Where is she? he asked. She was going to call Nick. He didn't come in. Sarah was worried. Papa came closer to me. Caleb, where is she? My heart seemed cold, cold like the wind outside. Her coat is gone. She wouldn't go out in this, Papa. She never, she always told me never. Papa called up the stairs. Sarah, are you there? There was only silence. Lottie began to howl. Sarah, his voice sounded frightened. Grandfather came down the stairs, his hair sleep must. What's wrong, he asked. Sarah, said Papa, she's out in this. Papa went o over on crutches to get his coat. No, said Grandfather, you're not strong enough yet, not fast enough. I'll go. Grandfather put on his coat and boots. She went after Nick, I said. Her coat is red, said Papa. Look for a red coat. Don't worry, Jacob, said Grandfather. The rope is up. I'll take Lottie with me. Grandfather took the lamp from the table. I'll come with you, I said. Stay with your Papa, he said. Lottie will help. The door opened, wind and snow blowing in. Then the door closed again, and it was quiet. I should go, I said to Papa. Grandfather's sick. He's not supposed to go out in this. What do you mean, asked Papa. I heard Grandfather talking to Sam. Sam told him he'd die if he worked too hard. I want to go, too. I stopped talking and began to cry. Papa put his arms around me and held me. We stood that way for a long time as the wind howled. Then the door opened suddenly, Nick and Lottie bounding in. Caleb, said Grandfather quickly, I need you. Now, we have to dig Sarah out of the snow. Is she all right? asked Papa. I don't know, said Grandfather softly. Caleb? Together we went out into the storm. The rope broke, shouted Grandfather. I found her by the tree. Nick was with her. We struggled through the snow and wind. I could barely see Grandfather in front of me, and then I saw a little bit of red in the snow. Sarah was buried there, her face almost the color of snow. Sarah, I shouted. She can't hear you, Caleb, shouted Grandfather. Here, help me dig her out. We used shovels and our hands until we could half carry, half lift Sarah out. She was so limp, I was so afraid. When we opened the door, Papa's face looked as pale as Sarah's. Sarah, he cried out. Talk to her, Jacob. Try to wake her. Don't let her sleep, said Grandfather. We lay Sarah on the daybed. Grandfather covered her with blankets and took off her boots. Get some tea, Caleb, or coffee, anything hot, he said. Sarah, said Papa, his voice frightened. He touched her face. Sarah, he said loudly, louder, frantically. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. I handed Papa a cup of tea. 
Papa raised Sarah's head and spoke softly to her. Sarah, drink this now. We want you to wake up. Now, Sarah, please. Suddenly, Sarah's eyes opened. Nick, she said, her voice faint. Papa smiled. Tears came down his face. Nick's fine, Sarah, said Papa. Here, Nick. Nick went over to Sarah and nosed her hand. Sarah's eyes closed again. It was cold, so cold, Sarah said, confused, and I was so tired. Grandfather rubbed Sarah's feet. It's all right, Sarah, said Grandfather, and the rope broke, said Sarah. Papa took Sarah in his arms. It's all right, Sarah. Papa looked at Grandfather and at me. You're fine. Everything is all right now, he said. Grandfather took off his coat and boots. He went up the stairs to bed, walking slowly. After a while, I left too. Left Papa rocking Sarah while Lottie slept, and Nick sat watching Sarah while the wind howled outside.